And now a clip from the desk of the apostle. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. Apostle, teacher, prophet, assigned by the Holy Ghost unto the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. I'm being led by the Lord to take a few minutes to share some information with you to let you know the direction of the ministry. Right now, the ministry is under very slight and brief uh, construction. There's things that the Lord is using the ministry to do right now so that we can better serve those that the Holy Ghost sends to this ministry. Uh, you might wonder, what it is behind me, the fire. There's something that the Lord is really, well, all right, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for all of our sins, our shortcomings, our faults, and our wrongs. Lord, I ask that you be with me right now, that you tell me what to say. Dispense angels upon angels, not only here where thou hast me, but also to where thou hast thine other servants, sheep, lamb, and children. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for all that you have done, are doing, and will do. Allow me to decrease that you may increase. And Father, you do the talk. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. The ministry is going in the direction of going up a notch for the people of God and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be used by the Lord to better minister to you even as the Lord is ministering to me. Now, there's some things that are going to be added to the ministry. So I'm being used by the Lord to uh, uh, make you uh, privy to that right now, to share with you, just so you know. Let's get into it. Again, behind me, you see fire. And you might be wondering, well, what is that all about? Well, the Lord said unto me recently, it's time to do some serious teaching. It's time to up the ante, so to speak. It's time to be used by the Holy Ghost as he raises the standard. A lot of people have been taken out of this world by the spirit of death, the angel of death, the demon named Samael. He has taking a lot of souls out of the earth realm by sending demons that work for him, spirits of sickness, spirits of murder, spirits of suicide, you know, all these other spirits that also contribute to a, 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 a human body being brought to the brink of death, spirit the spirit of schizophrenia, the spirit of depression, even in some cases the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of envy, the spirit, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of not wanting to be alone. So there's a lot of murders going on within families. Uh, also, the love of money 
is causing that as well as murders right in families, in homes, possessions, material things, the love of money. A lot of people, when they die, God said, are just being thrown in heaven. Let him explain that. What the Lord means is this. According to a lot of people, hell is empty. <laughs> but that's not true. A lot of ministers have lost the focus and the purpose of ministry. It is our responsibility, those of us that are called and chosen. It is our responsibility to warn people so that they don't go to hell. That's what the term being saved means. When you are saved, you're saved from the coming wrath of God. You're saved from the tribulation and the things that the earth is going to experience during that time. You are saved from hell. And death has no power over you. When you are a believer in and of and on Jesus Christ. People live any way they want to. Robbing, killing, stealing, murdering, committing suicide, doing all manner of things to leave this world. The cares of this world and the loss of fortune and inheritance and money can cause a person to think that if they, if they kill themselves, that they'll be in a better place. There are people who commit heinous crimes and they assume, because the devil tells them this, that it's better that you take your own life than to face the time in jail. My brothers and my sisters, that is pure error. You ever heard of the term, out of the frying pan into the fire? Mm. Well, if you live a life contrary to the word of God, if you live a life pleasing to you and not God, then what will happen is when you leave this world, if you're still in that state, you will not be saved from the coming wrath. You won't be. It is time that those of us, again, saith the Lord, that are called and chosen, start letting God use us to teach and preach this and to come before him in the ways according to this to approach his sheep according to this. It is time to let God prepare us for things that are coming that are good that the Lord want to impart unto his people. But you can't receive any of that without preparation. Preparation. Lord, help me to do right. Preparation. Uh, you know, some of you know that there's a strong teaching anointing on my life, and but right now the Lord is not leading me, and I'm trying to not pick up the word and get into it. Even though there are some scriptures the Lord is going to use me to throw out there to put on the table for you. But this, this talk, this colloquy 
is not about teaching and preaching, but it's to inform you which way the ministry is going. So as you see the changes, you've been told. We are going to utilize other platforms besides television and besides fake book. And I call it that because there's a lot of people on fake book who are professing to be called and chosen, yet are not. But because that platform is open to any and everyone, then a person can do like they do in the army. They can get up there and be all that they want to be. And the bad part is there's people that are unlearned concerning the things of God, and you don't know the difference, some people, don't know the difference between talking in a holy tongue and chanting. And there's a lot of people on Facebook chanting, not speaking in holy tongues, but chanting which is why they don't receive change in their life. It, it makes no sense to declare and decree things that you cannot fulfill because the only one, according to the word of God, who can declare and decree anything is the God of heaven. No man, no woman, no witch, no fortune teller, no psychic, no hex thrower has the power. No psychic, no medium, no palm reader, no root worker. It don't matter how many people get on television or a fake book and make all these advertisements telling you, I can help you get out of debt. That is a lie, you'll never get out of debt. As long as you're living in this world, you will have debt. If you have light, gas, rent, mortgage, car note, insurance, phone bill, cell phone bill, you will have debt. And insurance, life insurance, you can't forget that. Because when you leave this world, you have to be buried. The best thing to learn to do is to ask God to show you how to manage the resources that he blesses you to have so that though in this life and this world you're in debt, you'll be able to manage things. That's important. Very important. It's time to stop falling for the okie doke it's time. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, men, when you go before God to worship, to pray, to make supplication, to approach the throne of grace, uncover your head. If you have on a hat, take it off. If you have anything covering the very top of the cranium, Take it off. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, sisters, if you are going to God in worship or prayer or making supplication, just approaching his throne, if your head is uncovered, cover it. If you have a prayer shawl, put it on. If you have a bonnet, a hat, a scarf, a towel, anything, put it on. Because according to scripture, you cannot rightfully come to God un, or should I say, not lined up. Does that mean God won't hear you, brother? If you go before him with your head covered with a hat or something on, it doesn't mean that he won't hear you. But what it means is that the enemy can also say things to you. And if you're not lined up according to the word of God, according to the ordinance that the Lord makes available 
for us to understand, read about, and to know, then you will, will be halfway right. Halfway lined up. And the devil will have opportunity to trick you. You'll hear things and think it's coming from God. And it won't be. Sisters, does that mean if your head is not covered, that God won't hear you when you pray? It's not what that means. He'll still hear you. But when he responds, how will you know if it's him or not if you're not lined up like he said to be lined up? Okay, some say, well, I've, my mother is in ministry or my aunt or grandmother or I don't see world-renowned women in ministry covering their head. Why should I? Don't worry about that. You're accountable to God for you. Which brings me to another point. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. God said to throw this in there. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 4, brothers, it says praying and prophesying. Prophesying means to speak for the Lord under divine influence, under divine inspiration, under the anointing. But you have to be careful what you say, especially if you're saying, thus saith the Lord. Because if it doesn't come from God and you're lying on God, he's going to deal with you. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Read that when you get a chance. Sisters, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 5. Again, it says, praying and prophesying. Which also means speaking the word of the Lord. Speaking for the Lord. Speaking the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Speaking on behalf of the Godhead. You don't want to tell people the Bible says stuff that it don't say. Because then you're lying on God. And you might think, well, nothing happened to me so far. Well, <laughs> there come a time for everything. You sow to the spirit, you reap from the spirit. You sow to the flesh, you reap from the flesh. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Now, the Lord said that it's not a sin to not know something, but it's a sin to not try to get to know. That's called the sin of ignorance. It is very important because you don't want to leave this world and not go to heaven. You don't want to lead people away from God while you're in this earth realm handling this. A lot of people get into ministry for denarii, for money, for mammon. Mammon in the Greek means money. It don't mean nothing else but money. There's people that get in ministry for that reason. And they make pray, P-R-E-Y, and profit, P-R, O-F-I-T of the people that listen to them that may be searching for the truth. The Holy Ghost is saying it's time to let God prepare you for a real walk with God. It's time to grow. This demon of coronavirus has been running rampant Ramping all through nations. Taking people out. The world has put together intelligent minds, if you will, have put together many different kind of vaccines. And now there's problems with that. Now, the Lord said to make you aware of this. Some people are saying, well, we're living in the days of revelation. They're mentioning words like chip. They're mentioning things like buying and selling. Listen, don't listen to that because that is not true. Oh, 
Yes, it's true as written in scripture, but we're not there now. How do we know? There's certain things in scripture dealing with those times and era. E-R-A. One of them is the Antichrist. He will appear and make himself out to be God. So it would seem. Sitting in the, on the throne in Jerusalem. That has not happened yet. Sure, there's many antichrists running around. Yes. The antichrist is an epithet of Satan, meaning that's one of Satan's nicknames, the antichrist. The antichrist is empowered by Satan. Just like the false prophet is empowered by Satan. And in the book of Revelation, the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And Satan will also too, but they're going to go first. Death and hell will also be thrown into the lake of fire after giving up the dead that are in them. Again, is time for some teaching and preaching. The ministry is going to be dealing with a series on death, on hell, on heaven, on salvation, subjects that are in scripture for you to learn. For you to study on. For all of us to know. We need to know these things. God said that as he prepare. His people. To come out. Of this. Season. Of pandemic. When you come out. Those that make it out. When you come out. Saith the Lord. You shall. Worship. And serve God. In the way. That his word says to do. It's time right now to choose this day, this day, who you will serve. Muhammad cannot get you to heaven. Charles Taze Russell cannot get you to heaven. Mary Baker Eddy cannot get you to heaven. Ellen G. White cannot get you to heaven. Your denomination cannot get you to heaven. It don't matter how big the denomination is. It don't matter. It could be Kojic. It could be Baptist. It could be Holiness, Methodist. None of that. None of that. Mennonites. None of that. Amish. None of that. Catholicism. Surely none of that. No denomination can get you to heaven. There's only one way. To get to heaven. And that's through Jesus Christ. He's the open door. He's the gate. And if you don't go through him. Then you will not make it to heaven. You don't want to leave this world. And not be a part of the first resurrection. When the Lord comes back. To get his children. And the dead in Christ. Shall rise first. And those that are alive will be caught up with them. In the clouds. And be taken away. To have. That marriage feast, that wedding feast in heaven. After the Lord sits upon the beam of judgment seat and the saved folk get their reward. There's a lot of people 
that's not making it to heaven. They think they are. There's people that are lying, stealing, killing, selling drugs, cussing every other word, doing all kind of backbiting, uh, 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 causing dissension and division and tearing down ministries and speaking against the Holy Ghost and cursing Jesus Christ, calling him anathema. There's so many things. That's going on in this world. Politicians thinking that they're running the world and making all kind of decisions that's affecting the people and yet not affecting them. But then there's all manner of corruption going on in the political arena. Then you have things like the big tech, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, that are just trying to silence the people of God. from speaking. The Lord said to say prophets and prophetesses, it's time to get on post. The Lord is putting it in my spirit to say that there's no such thing as a prophet or prophetess who is not concerned about national things. If you do know that there's a prophetic anointing on your life, and yet you are not concerned about natural thi uh, uh, national things, excuse me, you need to go sit down and get prepared because you can't carry or be in the office and not perform the responsibility that goes along with it. Apostles, brother apostles, there's people that claim they are apostles but don't know what apostles are. Don't have a clue. Calling themselves apostles yet have no power. And then trying to build a ministry on a sign by using hirelings and those that they plant in the ministry to make them look great. Whoa, go stand over there. And I will show you the power of God, <sighs> said they. That's witchcraft. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. It's not in scripture. Sure, the Lord breathed on the disciples, and he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. But as far as that, and knocking people down, and not, oh, no, it's witchcraft. Get away from that. Even those who try to make you think the more money you have, the more blessed you are, and that that material gain is godliness. The Bible says in First Timothy chapter six, withdraw thyself from them. I said I wasn't going near the Bible. But the Holy Ghost said, pick it up. And I have to do what he says. First Timothy, chapter 6, verse, the Lord says, start at verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, other than this, but you have to know what this says in order to know if they're teaching otherwise. If you don't spend no time with God and study and read and, and make some time in your day for the Lord, the day that he gave you, then you won't know if anyone is preaching contrary to this or along with it. You won't know. And there's a lot of people that say, well, I read my Bible. I know what my Bible say. You have not read the Bible from cover to cover. Stop lying. Stop. There's so many people deceived. The spirit of deception is also running wild in this season and time. The Lord told Paul to write, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, not your bishop, not the one you call in your apostle. You have 
put yourself under the, the rulership and the thumb of these people and they are leading you the way they want to lead you when you don't belong to them. If you're a Christian, I'm not talking to the unsaved right now, but to the Christian. If you are a Christian, you belong to Jesus Christ. So the words that you need to hear, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, the scripture says, from such withdraw thyself. Withdraw thyself. Prayer warriors, with your prophets and prophetesses as well. It's time to get on point. See, because while the world and the politicians and all of these agencies and people are trying to find a way to get free from this spirit of coronavirus, the only way to get rid of a demon is to cast him out. But if you don't know how, then you might as well sit down. Because you can't mess with a demon and think that that demon has no power. Doesn't go that way. There's a lot of people that have died recently, yes. And while a lot of people are saying, they're in heaven, rock the heavens, they even have the nerve to look up. I'll be up there to meet you soon, like their Fred Sanford or something. No. If a person left this world not born again, they are not in heaven. Jesus said <laughs> to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, See, I don't want you to blame me for saying this because there's a lot of people that that just stepped on some people's toes because some people have lost loved ones. And know what they're saying? My loved one is in heaven. They're in a better place. They're not suffering with cancer no more. They're not suffering with the coronavirus no more. They're not suffering from leukemia or anything like that no more. They are in a better place. How do you know? How do you know? I hear God telling me to share something with you, but first let me read this. He said, read this too. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily. That means this is very, very important, Nicodemus. You got to get this. So do you, so do I. I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit. So let's pause for a minute because there's a lot of denominations, even the apostolic faith, that I'm talking about the real apostolic faith, the hardcore ones that, that uh, are Jesus only. I'm not talking about these ones that just use the word apostolic because it sounds deep and holy because it's not. That word is, is, is not. But those are the hardcore apostolic faith. 
that tell you you got to go down in the water in Jesus' name. That's true. It is true. It, it is true. It is true. And they also say to you that when you go down, that's how you become saved. That's not true. Ephesians 2 will tell you that. That's not true. And then they say, when you go down in the water and you come up, we'll tarry with you so you get filled with the Holy Ghost and start speaking in other tongues. That's not true either. Not in the sense that they're using it. Because can't no man or woman or cow or dog or cat or nothing, no teacher, no professor, no dean, no one can teach you how to speak in an unlearned tongue. It's just that. It's an unlearned tongue. And if you can't speak in an unlearned tongue, you sure cannot write it. And I'm sorry, I got to bust y'all bubble. Some people, a lot of people say, oh, Shondo. That's not a Hebrew word. That's not a, even a holy word. That word don't even exist. And, and if it did, you can't throw it into the holy language because, again, it's an unlearned word. Stop praying follow the leader. Water baptism does not save you. John 1 and 12 says, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. But as many as received him, John 1 and 12, King James Version, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's how you get saved, except Accept, A-C-C-E-P-T. Accept Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the hammer, the rock, the chief cornerstone. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's all it takes. It's that simple. And some say, I read my Bible all the time. In John chapter 5, Verse 39, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So you can't learn about Jesus Christ without this. How are you going to accept someone you don't even know? We can't do it. We can't do it. When Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Spirit there is with a capital S, meaning the Holy Ghost. But let's deal with this word water right here. This is symbolic of something and someone. In John chapter 15, verse Let's start at verse 1. We're only going to read three verses. Verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch, verse 2, in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now verse 3 says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken of unto you. The word is the cleansing agent. The word washes you. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 scripture says husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church that's the body of Christ, not a building, but the people, the body of Christ. And gave himself for it, it meaning what? The body of Christ. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The word. So water baptism, it don't save you. 
The only thing water baptism is, is an outward expression. Instead of running around telling everybody, I turn from a life of sin, I turn from a life of sin. Water baptism shows outwardly that you turn from a life of sin. That's what it does. It doesn't do anything for your soul. It doesn't even do anything for your body. But it get it wet. But it's just an outward sign, if you will. So when people tell you, well, you need to go down, because remember, the thief on the cross, some of you that read the Bible, the thief on the cross, when Jesus told him today, you shall be with me in paradise, Jesus didn't say, hold it, cut, stop everything, and get off the cross and took the men off the cross and baptized them. He didn't do that. The man made it into the kingdom. He made it into paradise that day by accepting, accepting Jesus Christ. So this ministry is being used by God to go up a notch. It's going to be some serious teaching going on. It's going to be teaching on heaven, hell, teaching on this and that, so that you, my friend, are fed the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is that your faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your faith grows by the word of God. It can't grow no other way. Also, the ministry is going to be utilizing other platforms. We're also going over to YouTube live even the 25 years of being on television, the shows were always live. This is the longest that the Lord has used the ministry to do tape shows and drop them off. But for uh, 12 years, 12 years, uh, 12, yeah, 12 years, it was all live shows. So right now there's a whole bunch of old shows that the Lord leads me to put on uh, social media and on the internet old shows with other ministers because this ministry has never been a selfish ministry God has always said open the door for people and give them a chance to be used by him to help feed the sheep this is a teamwork thing y'all this ain't about Apostle Coleman it's not about this one or that one that one or this one Jesus Christ he said it he told you right in the word so that you would know and not be ignorant of it. In John chapter 15, verse 1, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That's what he said. And then over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Brother Paul was used by the Holy Ghost to write in verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? The divisions are denominations, separations, a cult, <laughs> a group, a sect, S-E-C-T. Are you not carnal? 
Why are you making 10 ways to get to God or 20 ways or a thousand ways or a million ways when there's not that? It's only one way to get to the Father. Are you not carnal for doing that? That's why you do it, because of being carnal? I'm Koji, you're carnal. I'm Baptist, you're carnal. I'm Methodist, you're carnal. I'm apostolic. You're carnal. I'm holiness. I'm a Mennonite. I would serve with the Amish people. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I, and people on Sunday that worship God on Sunday are Satan worshipers. That's a lie. Sunday has always been the first day of the week. And in, in the Bible, it's called the Lord's Day. But the Sabbath has always been the seventh day and has never changed has never changed you're carnal if you're part of a denomination I'm not even gonna I'm not led by the Lord to even address the beasts of the field those that are in fraternities and 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 stuff like that and secret societies and and brotherhoods and sisterhoods and ah, that's all carnal that's those are cults any occult is defined as any organization put together not for the glory of God that's a cult because there's always a leader that's leading it it's always patterned after somebody Are ye not carnal? Paul said, verse 4, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Even people walking around saying, Oh, hey, daughter, hey, son, you know, spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. That's carnal. That's a person setting themselves over you when you don't belong to them. If you are a Christian, then Jesus Christ died for you. Get with the program, or you will not make it in heaven. You will not get to heaven. You will not enter into God's rest. Brother Paul was led by the Holy Ghost to write, I have planted Apollos watered, this first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. That means they're equal. They're, they're on the same level. They're colleagues. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. That means I'm not accountable for you. I'm accountable for me and what I do. And the same with you and every other minister. Verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Look that up. Ye are God's building. You don't belong to no man. Now, I'm led by the Holy Ghost to say this. Those that are in ministry that have a building, and this is where you exercise your ministry, and your jurisdiction, your territory is behind four walls. <laughs> when you realize that if you're in a five-fold ministry, that you are, if you're an apostle brother, then you are an apostle to the body of Christ. My sister, if you're a prophetess, and brother, you're a prophet, you are a prophet and a prophetess to the body of Christ. That's broad territory. Brother and sister, if you're an evangelist, you are an evangelist to the body of Christ. My brothers, if you are a pastor, which in the Greek is the same thing as bishop, then you are a bishop, an under-shepherd, because Jesus Christ is the good shepherd and the over-shepherd, but you are an under-shepherd, my brothers, to the body of Christ. And brother and sister teacher, if you are a teacher and you're a Christian and you're in ministry, you are a teacher to the body of Christ. 
the body. We are one body with many members. See, this ministry has been on television 27 years. If you ask me, Apostle, how many lives has the ministry touched? I don't know. And it's not my concern to take a census. Mm -mm. The important thing is this. To be used by the Holy Ghost. To share the word. And win souls. And make disciples for him. I'm going to jump in the living Bible. And go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm getting ready to close as the Lord leads. There's one more thing I want to read to you, and I'm out. Second Corinthians chapter 4, in the Living Bible, Brother Paul wrote, It is God himself in his mercy who has given us this wonderful work of telling his good news to others. And so we never give up. In the King James it says, it is God that has given us this ministry. I read out of the King James. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Back in the Living Bible, verse 2 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, We do not try to trick people into believing. We are not interested in fooling anyone. We never try to get anyone to believe that the Bible teaches what it doesn't. Not those of us that follow the Lord. In the King James Version, that verse, verse 2 says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. There's a lot of ministers that's telling you all the Bible says things it don't say. And you're falling for it. It's going to lead you right to hell. You're falling for it. Follow the word. Even Brother Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's what anybody in ministry should say. They should tell you, follow Christ. Even when people say to me, oh, apostle, you're my apostle. I tell them, no, I'm not. I'm your brother. It's my responsibility to share with you what thus saith the Lord in his word. But I'm not. You're apostle. Uh, don't throw me way up there. Yes, my license says apostle. The anointing on my life says apostle. So God bless the credentials to match the calling. Yes, yes, yes. All of that. But I'm down to earth. Like Brother Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, you have some people, when people know you, they see you in your human weakness. They, they see stuff about you that remind them you're human. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm led to read read verse 2 again. We do not try to trick people into believing. We are not interested in fooling anyone. We never try to get anyone to believe that the Bible teaches what it doesn't. All such shameful methods we forego. We stand in the presence of God as we speak, and so we tell the truth as all who know us will agree. If the good news we preach is hidden to anyone, it is hidden from the one who is on the road to eternal death. Satan, who is the god of this evil world, has made him blind, unable to see the glorious light of the gospel that is shining upon him, or to understand the amazing message we preach about the glory of Christ, who is God. Now here's what I'm led to leave you with. 
the fire behind me, right? The theme of it is hell. To show you there is a hell. The word used in the King James Version of the Old Testament to translate the Hebrew word shield signifying the unseen world. The translation of the Greek word Hades in the New Testament of the King James Version, which also means the unseen world. Hell is uh, the Greek word also Tartarus in the New Testament, signifying an infernal region. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. Says this. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. Let me read verse 3. These, let me go to verse 1. But there were false prophets too in those days, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly tell their lies about God, turning against even their masters who bought them. But theirs will be a swift and terrible end. Many will follow their evil teaching that there is nothing wrong with sexual sin, and because of them Christ and his way will be scoffed at. These teachers in their greed will tell you anything to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction is on the way. For God did not spare, this verse 4, even the angels who sinned but threw them into hell, chained in gloomy caves and darkness until the judgment day. Hell is real. Psalms 9 verse, I mean, yes, yeah, Psalms 9 verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. All the nations that forget Elohim. All the nations that forget Yahweh shall be turned into hell. <laughs> They're not going to heaven. It's a shame that. This nation helps other nations that don't serve the God of this nation. Isaiah, well, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20 says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of men are never satisfied. It's a comparison. Isaiah 5, verse 14 says, Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Hell does not get full. She grows. She enlarges herself without measure. It's not going to be a lot of people going to heaven. And Jesus said that. But it's going to be a whole lot going to hell. In fact, people are in hell right now. Read scripture. But see, we're, again, I could go into the scripture and read it. But the Holy Ghost said to tell you, that there's going to be a lot of teaching done through this ministry. Done through it. A lot of teaching. And, 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 and it's not going to make me popular. I'm already not popular. <laughs> the devil hates me. His demons hate me. Hell hates me. Even ministers hate me. They hate the anointing. They don't, even, they don't know me. But they hate the anointing on my life because God uses me to teach and preach this. At any time. You are a man or woman of God who comes with scripture and teaches the word you will not be like. Stop trying to be accepted because it's not going to happen. And if you are liked, if they, people, listen, people that don't like you will team up to come against you. If you are liked by everybody, something's wrong with that picture. Because the leaders that God placed in leadership, they go through things. And they live an alienated life. So it is to it.
in verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 14, God told Satan, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. Hell is real. Hell exists. Don't think it don't. And those of us in ministry, our responsibility and our lifetime assignment is to warn you to not go there. They have a saying in the world, don't be so heaven bound that you're no earthly good. The devil's a liar. Uh, then you got people say, oh, the devil's a lie. T talk right. It's not he's a lie. He's a liar. He tells lies. You are supposed to be heaven bound. And at the same time, to be in the world but not of it. There's no thugs in the pulpit. There's no divas in the pulpit. You shouldn't be looking like the world and yet standing there serving God's word. Mm -mm. It's time to let God shape you, make you over. It's time to go to the Holy Ghost salon, sisters, and to the Holy Ghost barbershop, brothers, and let God change you. This ministry also going to be uh, giving away merch, merchandise, cups, saucers, t-shirts, hoodies, socks, sweatpants, sweatsuits with the ministry's logo on it. Oh, God is using the ministry to do some things. And as you see the Lord use the ministry to do television broadcasts, the broadcasts are now going to be offered for an, an honorarium and shipping and handling on any and every subject. It's time to blow up. It's time to blow up. Not for selfish gain, but that the ministry be self-sufficient. Not just this one, but there's other ministries going forward and being elevated by God too. Elevation comes when you get lined up. There's some sisters that God want to bless to be married and you're fighting it. You're fighting God. Because you don't want the one he sent to you. You better wake up. And brothers, leave that carnal woman alone. Leave her alone. I'm talking to the brothers in ministry, leave her alone. Because she'll tear the ministry up. And you don't need that. So, there's going to be an upcoming series on heaven, hell, angels, salvation. The ministry does a theology class which results in clergy license only in one of the five-fold ministry offices, nothing other than that. No adding to the word or to the ministry as far as offices. No one gets ordained as an archbishop or, 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 or as, as a chaplain or... Eh, no one gets ordained as a chief apostle and master prophet. and That's garbage. That's not God. That's that. God didn't put that in the body. Search it in scripture. And there's going to be teaching on marriage, on the family, the role of the husband, the role of the wife, the role of the children, even the role of the neighbors and the in-laws. <laughs> the Lord just going to use this ministry to be teaching all kind of stuff straight from the word. So get your pens, papers, Bibles, and get ready because it's on. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us for our sins. Thank you for this time of fellowship and gathering. Thank you for all of this. Feed your people. Let us have a blessed night, a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon. Just be with us. Thank you, O oh God for having mercy on us and for seeing fit to bless us. And we ask that you do all of this for your glory, not ours. In Jesus' name we thank you and we pray, amen. And those of you that have been in the gospel a long time, shape up.
so God can use you. Don't be a hazard. All right? <laughs> Don't get caught up in the theatrics either. Watch this. I got to go. God bless you. In Jesus' name. This was another clip from the desk of the apostle. Join us again another time for another clip. God bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.